Good morning. What happens at the end of this age? Today we're looking at Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 27. Here's what it says, But in those days after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. In Mark chapter 13, Jesus has outlined the characteristics of the time period between his time of his first coming and the end of the age. You and I live somewhere between those two points, very, very much near the end of the two, I'm quite sure. So our passage talks about other signs between then and the end, the sun and the moon being darkened, stars falling from heaven, and so forth in our text. But then Jesus comes, the second coming of Jesus happens. At that time, God sends his angels, and they gather us from one end of the heavens to the other, uh, we, from all over, and we're gathered together, and he just simply delivers us. He just intervenes and comes and delivers us at that point. So here's the take-home point. When this time period comes, it's all pretty much over here, and uh, we have Jesus coming for us. It's the literal, actual, personal second coming of Jesus. There isn't anything left at that time in the prophetic program for us to really do, and so he just proceeds to work his way through it. And so we're so glad that that day comes. The major point at this part in time is, is for he gathers us and delivers us. It is the most blessed time uh, that has ever been. And you and I may be alive when that time comes. We just look forward to that so much. That is what God has been looking forward to as well. And he just so desires for that day to come. And, and we desire it too. Although we tend to get caught up in, in little, all these other little things in our life. But they are of no magnitude whatsoever compared to the personal return of Jesus, the second coming. So the second coming of Jesus is, is personal. It's not, it's not antiseptic. It's not just a, a theoretical thing out there somewhere that we, we've thought about and written a book about. It's, it's something we're looking forward to. The second coming of Jesus is personal. It's what we've been longing for, and that's the big thing. When we look at these different things, the signs and the sun and the moon and all that, it's interesting, it's important, it's there because it's important, but the ultimate thing that we can't lose sight of is Jesus' soon personal return, and that should fill yours and my days with hope. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for loving us and watching over us. We thank you that at long last, at long last, it may be in our lifetimes, that Jesus will actually return and all the sin and suffering will be ended. We look forward to that day. Help us to be alert and look at the signs of things, but help us to keep the uttermost point, our personal walk with you. That's where we have to have our ultimate focus. Thank you for Jesus. We pray this and ask it in his name. Amen. Why don't you leave a comment below in the comments below here? Why don't you subscribe if you haven't subscribed and put a like in there so that this will rise higher in the YouTube search ranks and other people can look at these devotionals and hopefully the, their heart will be drawn toward Jesus through them. Prophecy is important. We should all of us understand it much better than we do. But the ultimate thing is we're very close to the day when we'll come face to face with Jesus. Let that decorate your day. God be with you.